Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. <laughs> okay, everybody, welcome once again. Um, we're going to start the class now. So uh, just let me go full screen for this. And I'm going to share the screen with you now. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening, welcome. Okay. I'm gonna take the attendance. When you hear your name, let me know, okay? So, um, Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Mendoza. Goody Mendoza. Okay. Goody Mendoza. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. Sorry. I was going to say Mendoza Godoy, but no, that's another Ana Mendoza. Okay. Now, Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay. What about Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy? Are you here tonight? Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present. Welcome. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Hello. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Is here, teacher. Welcome. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Present teacher. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Present teacher. Welcome. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Jose Eraibin Enriquez. Jose Eraibin Enriquez. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Good evening. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Uh, Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. Present teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hi. Hello. Uh, Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Welcome. Janet Yanira Rodriguez Andres. Present teacher. Hello. Um, Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present teacher, good evening. I'm sorry. Uh, Who's here, speaking? Alejandro. Alejandro. Okay. Thank you, Alejandro. Sorry. Welcome. Um, where was I? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. No, not here. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Present teacher. Welcome. Jose Eraibin Enriquez. 
Good evening, teacher here. Good evening. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. We have two chat entries here. Maritza says present. Okay, Maritza, thank you. Here. Attendance taken. All right. Um, I'll call you attendance at the end of the class once again. For now, uh, we need to start. Everybody, be welcome. This is Advanced English 2, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. And this is session 16, the last one. And today is October the 19th of 2023. So everybody be welcome and uh, well, let's do this. Okay, this is our final class for this level. So um, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have a quick review on non-defining relative clauses as sentence modifiers. Now, one thing that we have studied before is that there are two types of relative clauses, right? You have defining relative clauses and then you have non-defining relative clauses. Does anybody remember the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses? What is the main difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses? Can you give me a difference right there? Anything? You don't remember or you don't want to participate? Or both? <laughs> okay, Jose Raivin. Teacher, I remember that uh, non-defining is the part of the sentence that you can erase and the sentence still has meaning. Okay. But the this is the non-defining and mm. defining is the one that you cannot erase because the sentence loses meaning. Okay, that is correct. Okay, when you have a defining relative clause, you have to keep it in the sentence. Otherwise, it may be grammatically correct, but it will not contain enough information for the listener to know who or what you're talking about. And uh, when you're using a non-defining relative clause, like the ones that we have uh, on the screen right now, um, they only give you extra information. So you can remove them from the sentence and the sentence will still be grammatically correct and also will make sense uh, by itself, okay? Without the information in the relative clause. Okay, that's that's fundamentally, okay, that's the difference, okay? Between uh, defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. What is, uh, thank you, Jose Raibin, by the way. Uh, what is another difference between a defining and a non-defining relative clause? What Jose said was great, okay? But there is another thing that he didn't mention. Maybe uh, someone else can tell me. Or he can tell me <laughs> if he remembers. So, uh, Jose, okay. In the sentence, the use of commas. Uh-huh. When do you uh, use commas? In a non-defining, mm -hmm. you you use commas, but in the defining relative class, you don't use commas. Correct. Okay. You will not use commas for defining relative clauses, but you will need the commas when you're using defi non-defining relative clauses. So basically, you separate the non-defining relative clause from the rest of the sentence by using commas. If the relative clause appears at the beginning or at the end, you will only need one comma. But if it appears in the middle of the sentence, you will need two commas to separate it from the rest of the sentence, which is the main clause. OK, very good. Thank you, Jose. Now, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. Now, let's take a good look at this. Non-defining relative clauses as sentence modifiers. This is what we started studying yesterday. We couldn't finish, but we're going to do it today. And also, we have to do some extra exercises. And also, uh, there's the final exam, OK? So you can use non-defining relative clauses with which to make a comment about an entire sentence. OK, so you say something and immediately after you want to comment on what you just said. Well, that's when you use uh, non-defining relative clauses with which. OK, so there's an ex there are two examples. I'm going to zoom in. I have three cats. Now, if I only say I have three cats, 
that makes sense. People will understand what I'm talking about. Okay, if I come and I tell you, hey, people, you know what? I have three cats. They will say like, okay, great. Good for you, teacher. So I have three cats, all right? That's a complete sentence. It's grammatically complete also. And uh, there isn't any missing information. You don't need any extra information for, for, for you to understand what I'm talking about. So the information that follows uh, is contained in a non-defined relative clause because it is extra, okay? there's There's... There isn't really uh, any essential information missing from that sentence. So you say, I have three cats, coma, which means there's usually a lot of cat fur on my clothes. Okay. So what happens right here? I have I have just used a non-defining relative clause, and it begins with which. Okay. But what what am I doing when I do this? Okay, which means there's usually a lot of cat fur on my clothes. I am commenting on the whole situation that I mentioned before. And what is the whole situation? That I have three cats. I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about my cats. I am talking about the fact that I have three cats. That's the idea. So I have three cats, comma, which means there's usually a lot of cat fur on my clothes. Okay? What about the second sentence? My roommate is a slob. He's a very, you know, lazy, disorganized person. Okay? And probably a bit dirty too. So my roommate is a slob. Now imagine that you know that I have a roommate and I tell you, you know what? My roommate is a slob. Hey, people will understand. Okay? Uh, in that sentence, I mentioned all the information that I need to convey. Okay? There is no need for me to add any other type of information because it is pretty clear. So that means that anything that I may add to that sentence will be in the form of a not defining relative clause because it will be extra. Now, I am not talking about my roommate specifically. I am talking about the fact that my roommate is a slob. So I say, comma, which is why I want to get my own apartment. Okay. Maybe he's a nice person. Maybe, okay, but there's a problem. And the problem is that he's a slob. He's, he's a mess, okay, he's, he's disorganized. He's, he, he doesn't like to clean, okay. Um, he's not very responsible. So th the problem is that. The problem is that my roommate is a slob. And then you say, comma, which is why I want to get my own apartment. So we did this yesterday. Um, First exercise, match these statements with the appropriate non-defining clauses. Then compare it with a partner and write two similar statements on your own. So I want to give away all my old books. You have letter H, uh, which means I have to get boxes for them. Okay. Then you have, I had locked my keys in the car. Letter A, which is why you saw me opening it with a coat hanger. Number three, I'm going to repaint my room next week. Letter D, which is why I've been saving old newspapers. Number four. Yes, Yanira. <coughs> Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Please. Attendance. Uh, uh, could you explain me why these are called non-defining? They are non-defining relative clauses. Non-defining what? What? Non-defining what? Relative I, clauses. I, I understand when you, when the explanation say we uh, uh, do the, the sentence with wish mm -hmm. to make a comment about the entire sentence. Mm -hmm. All, uh, both of parts are the complete sentence. The second part, we add wish and the explanation or mm -hmm. complement. Mm -hmm. But what is not defining? It's non-defining because the information in the relative clause is not necessary for us to understand the main idea of the sentence. If you have this sentence right here, I have three cats, that's the main idea that I want to convey. Uh -huh. I have three cats, okay? Imagine <clears throat> that I only tell you I have three cats. You will understand, uh -huh. okay? You totally understand. Now, any other information that I provide is extra. Okay, so I say I have three cats, comma, which means there's usually a lot of cat fur on my clothes. This is a non-defined relative clause because I can omit 
where I can remove the whole non-defined and relative clause and the sentence still makes sense. I mean, um, the idea is that I have three cats. I mean, nobody will get confused if I say that. If we go back to defining relative clauses, I'm going to go back a few slides. Let's see, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Um, okay, now this is the other type of relative clause. You have a defining relative clause. When you say, for example, someone who is able to think yes. quickly might be a good surgeon. <laughs> now, if you do away with the relative clause, the sentence is still grammatically correct, but it doesn't make much sense. I can say, imagine someone might be a good surgeon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Grammatically, it is correct, but people will ask you, who are you talking about? Who is this someone? Right? The same thing happens if I say a person might be a good musician. Okay, yeah, only people are musicians, right? Okay, so um, still grammatically correct, but it doesn't make much sense to the listener. Because if I say a person might be a good musician, okay, yeah, all musicians are people. Okay, so you need to add some specific uh, defining essential information for the whole sentence to make sense. In this case, you say a person who is trained in music might be a good musician. Now the sentence makes sense because you know specifically what kind of person I'm talking about. That's pretty much the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. If you if we go back to uh, the, the slide, let's see, where is it? 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 Okay. Okay, right here. No, not here. <laughs> just a second. Okay, here. Again, I say just I just say I have three cats and you and you will understand. <laughs> Anything I mention after that is extra, which means there's usually a lot of cat fur in my clothes. I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> kind of. Maybe. Maybe I'm confused about the the term non-defining. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Non-defining. Okay, when when information. Okay, uh, in defining a relative clause, the information in the relative clause defines the subject or defines whatever it is that you're talking about. In other words, it tells you who or what I am referring oh, to. Okay. If it is non-defining, that means that the information doesn't define whatever it is that I'm talking about. It only gives extra information. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh -huh. oh, I see. Okay. Thank great. you, teacher. Okay. You're welcome. All right. So um, we were here, right? Number four. My son made a robot costume for himself, letter F, which is why he was covered in aluminum foil yesterday. Uh, our neighbor saves her empty jars for my dad, letter B, which is great since he uses them to store nails and things in his workroom. Number six, my new cell phone can store and play music, letter C, which is great because I can listen to it while I'm on the subway. Number seven, it's easy to get lost when driving in a new city, that's letter E, uh, which is why personal navigation systems were developed for cars. And the last one, number eight, Adam still listens to music on an old-fashioned record player, letter G, which is strange since cassettes and CDs have been around for so long now, okay? And now music streaming services like Spotify, for example. So uh, that that's uh, the explanation of non-defined relative clauses of sentence modifiers. And this is also knowledge check 4.10. So if you uh, see the platform, you will have this. Uh, I decided not to put everything in the presentation because the exercise is like super long. I mean, only, I can only have like one per, per slide. So these are the answers. Okay, you have the answers right here. You can identify the answers on the platform, which is easy because you just have to choose. Okay, I guess everybody has done this at this point. Um, now, this is some extra information, right? This is not in the platform and it is not in the manual. So I'm going to share this with you via WhatsApp. Just give me a moment. 
need to find this. Here. It's taking a while. Okay, right there. Okay, I just uh, sent it to you via WhatsApp, so you can study it later. So look at this. Non-defined relative clauses can be used to sentence modifiers and can contain almost any verb. Some of the most common ones are surprise, depress, encourage, suggest that, contribute to, and result in. I mean, they can contain any verb, but these are the most common ones, okay? Note that the verbs which describe emotion must be followed by an object. You have some examples. My husband refused to get an MP3 player, comma, which has resulted in a closet full of all CDs. Okay, you have this result in, resulted in a closet full of all CDs. The second one, my teacher praised my English today. He said like, hey, your English is really good, comma, which encourages me to study harder. Okay, what encourages you to study harder? Was it the teacher? No. Was it the English? No. It was the fact that the teacher praised my English. Okay, that's what encourages me to study harder. So basically we're commenting on the whole previous situation that I just mentioned. My dad is happier since he got up, he, so, sorry, since he took up golf. By the way, uh, that's an expression to take up a hobby means to start the hobby, right? Uh, to take up a hobby, okay, means to uh, start practicing a new hobby, okay? That's the meaning of that. It's a phrase or verb. To take up a hobby means to start practicing a new hobby. That's it. So uh, my teacher, sorry, my dad is happier since he took up golf. That means he started to play golf, which suggests that hobbies are both are good, both mentally and physically, okay? So when I say, which suggests that hobbies are good both mentally and physically, I'm not talking about my dad. I'm not talking about uh, the golf. I'm, I'm talking about the fact that my dad is happier now since he took up golf. That's what I'm commenting on. Next one. I learned how to clean jewelry with toothpaste, comma, which depressed me because I meant I had wasted a fortune in expensive cleaners. Okay. So... What depressed me? The jewelry? No. The toothpaste? No. Okay. What depressed me is the fact that I learned how to clean jewelry with toothpaste because then I realized that I had spent a lot of money on useless cleaning products. Okay. I mean, maybe they were not useless, but I mean, there was no reason to spend so much money if toothpaste is so cheap. You can also use uh, baking soda, by the way. That's very, pretty useful. So, um, the next one, I've started making my own clothes, comma, which has contributed to financial savings and a full closet, okay? So is it the clothes that have contributed to financial savings and full closet? No, it's the fact that I've started making my own clothes. That's what has contributed to final financial savings and a full closet. So again, as you can see right here, the relative clause comments on the whole situation. Okay, not a specific element in the main uh, clause, but it comments about the whole main clause. Before we continue, and there's an exercise, do you have any questions about this? And essentially, there's nothing new. Okay, just they, they're just mentioning the most the most common verbs that you can find in non-defined relative clauses as sentence modifiers. Uh, other than that, I mean. It's, Pretty much the same we have studied before. Any questions? I'll take your silence as a no. Okay, exercises. Match these statements with the appropriate non-defining clauses. I'm going to give you three minutes, okay, for you to work in this individually. After that, we're going to check answers together. So three minutes begin right now.
All right, time's up. So number one, I need a volunteer who wants to participate. Number one, I use dental floss to string beads for jewelry. How about this one? I don't know, teacher. I think let it see. Let her see, which is why I have so much of it. Okay, uh, who's speaking? It is, right? It is yeah. around this. Okay, that is correct. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, yeah, it's letter C, which is why I have so much of it. Always remember to raise your hand, okay? So, uh, Noemi Alicia, number two, please. Number two, letter F. Can you read it, please? We should count it. Uh, the, whole, the whole sentence, please. Number two, letter yes. F. Yeah, but can, can you read the whole sentence? My sister, always. My sisters always loved school, mm -hmm. which uh, no tengo mis lentes. Okay. Encouraged her to go into teaching. Which encouraged her to go into teaching. Yeah, my sister always loved school, comma, which encouraged her to go into teaching. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Naomi. <laughs> Uh, number three. Number three. Who wants to try? Come on. It's the final class. Don't make me beg for answers. Okay, it is. I'm not sure. Uh, let it A. Okay, can you read it? Uh, I'll move to a small to which surprise you saying I love city. Okay, so Al moved to a small town, comma, which surprised us since he loves cities, right? Okay, thank you. Number four, Miss Romero, Miss Romero with glasses. Okay. Okay, I think it is letter H. Can I you just read it? Had, of course. Yeah, yeah. I just had a big fight with Anna, which depressed me because she is my best friend. Mm -hmm. Which depressed me because she's my best friend. Okay, thank you, Miss Romero. Number four, Byron. Number five, Janet. Okay, number five. Number four. Ah, sorry, number five, number five. And then Janet will get number six. Yeah. Yes, number five is letter D, which is why people always go to him for help. Okay, good. Uh, but let's always read the whole sentence, right? Paolo is, or Paolo, right, is really good at solving problems, which is why people always go to him for help. Okay, thank you, uh, Byron. Janet, Janita, number six, the whole sentence, please. <clears throat> Number C, um, Amy jokes every morning, which has contributed to weight loss and more energy. Yes, that'll be. That's correct. Amy jogs every morning, which has contributed to weight loss and more energy. Okay, very good. Thank you, Janet. Um, great. How about number seven? Who wants to try? Jenny Elizabeth. Okay, I... It's letter E. Okay. I, ha I had a private tutor, tutor for the past few months, which has resulted in better grades for me. Yes, I've had a private tutor for the past few months, which has resulted in better grades for me. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you very much. And the last one, which should be easy because there's only one left. Uh, who wants to Who wants to read it? It's more about reading it than getting the right answer. So uh, who wants to who wants to read for the class? Nobody wants to read for the class. All right, then. So um, Debbie. Okay, Debbie. If no one wants to. <laughs> okay. Are you sure, okay. Debbie? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Really sure. Okay. Yeah. You say, um, sure, sure is my legal name, you say. Why yeah. You? Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah. All right, please. I got your point. <laughs>
<laughs> so the, okay. This is what I was talking about yesterday. That's the kind of humor I enjoy. Yes, you know, I understood and, that. And stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's read it. It's really great. Okay, okay. I want to take my own computer to class, which means I will have to start saving for a laptop. Yeah, totally. I want to take my own computer to class, which means I'll have I'll have to start saving for a laptop. Okay, everybody, thank you for participating. There's one more exercise that we need to solve before we go into the final exam. And the exercise is here. I'm sorry about the bad um, image quality. Okay, but that's the best I have. So combine the sentences with non-defining relative clauses beginning with, which is why, or which means that, okay? Example. People feel the need to keep in touch, right? To keep in touch means to keep communication. So people feel the need to keep in touch. Cell phones have become popular. So you say people feel the need to keep in touch, comma, which is why cell phones have become popular. Okay? So you can complete your sentence by using, sometimes you can use which is why or which means that. And in some other ones, you can only use which is why, because they don't, it's the only logical choice. So um, I'm going to give you, say, three minutes for you. No, uh, four minutes, OK, because there are four sentences. I'm going to give you four minutes for you to do this. And after that, we're going to check answers together. All right? Jenna, Janira, do you have a question? No, teacher. Ah, your hand was up. Sorry. It's OK, don't worry. All right. So, uh, OK, I, I'll give you four minutes. Remember, you, I want you to, you know, join the two sentences by using a relative clause beginning with which is why or which means that. Just one thing. So, sometimes you can use both. I mean, not both. Sometimes you can use either of them. OK. And in some other cases, you can only use which is why. OK, so just be careful right there. All right, let's do it. Four minutes beginning right now. Here we go. Four minutes. Yes, Debbie. Um, so far, may I try the number two? Okay, cool. Uh, but but we'll check uh, after the time is up. But yeah, okay, number two is yours, I promise. Okay.
All right, time is up. And Debbie wants to participate. So number two, new diseases are being discovered all the time. Researchers have to work even harder. Okay. Uh, if I'm mistaken, please tell me. Okay. New diseases are being discovered all the time, which means that researchers have to work even harder. That's right. Okay. New diseases are being discovered all the time, which means that researchers have to work even harder. Or you say, which is why researchers have to work even harder. Either form makes sense. Okay. So yeah, correct answer. Very good. Uh, I believe Gabriela Laure wanted to participate too. Do you want to take number yeah. three, Gabriela? Okay. So uh, people like listening to music on the go. MP3 players have become popular. This book is old. Okay. Let me tell you. <laughs> so... Um, there you go. People like listening to music on the go. That's why MP3 players have become popular. Which is why, right? MP3 players have become popular. Yeah. People like listening to music on the go, comma, which is why MP3 players have become popular. Good. Thank you very much, Gabriela. How about number four? Traffic congestion is becoming a major problem in cities. New types of public transportation will have to be developed. Who wants to... Try number four. Byron. Yes. Traffic congestion is becoming a major problem in cities, which means that new types of public transportation will have to be de developed. That's right. Traffic congestion is becoming a major problem in cities. You can say which is why or which means that. Either form is fine. New types of public transportation will have to be developed. Sorry, I couldn't complete the sentence, but I didn't have enough, enough space right here. And thank you, Byron. That's correct. Number five, the last one. Okay, who can help us? But number five. Number five, just one more. Maritza. Okay, reality TV shows are cheap and easy to produce. There are fewer comedy and drama shows on television. Okay, really TV shows are cheap and easy to produce, which is why there are fewer comedy and drama shows on television. That's right. Reality TV shows are cheap and easy to produce, comma, which is why there are fewer comedy and drama shows on television. Great. Thank you, Maritza. Thank you very much. And everybody, thanks for your participation. Um, that's it. With that, we finish uh, say the section. Okay, we finish section number four. And now we're about to start. We're just going to go uh, through the final exam. Okay, so uh, there's the listening part. I'm going to play it once, and I want you to do this for me, right? Listening, the woman says that more people are using video calling, are sending emails, or setting up websites to communicate online. Number two, more people are able to use video calling because A, they show, oh, I can't see. Okay, fuzzy pictures, they are more affordable. The software has been improved. Number three, older video calling has problems such as A, broken pictures, B, large screens, or C, unclear audio. And number four, today's video calling feature, A, clear sound and pitch, B, far away sound, or C, fuzzy faces. Okay. So I'm going to play the track. I want you to listen. Okay, choose the right answer. I'm pretty sure you have done this by now, but okay, let's do it anyway. Uh, just in case, you know, there's someone who hasn't. So let's listen to it. Please let me know if you can hear it. Can you hear that? Yes, you can. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our technology report this evening is on making the world a smaller place. Linda? Thanks, Ted. These days, with college students studying in different cities or even abroad, families spread all over the world, and even more office employees working with overseas companies, people are looking for better ways to communicate with each other. Many people already use video calling with family, friends, and business associates, and as this technology continues to improve, even more people will be using this helpful communication tool. It used to be that video calling meant seeing unclear faces, hearing bad audio, and losing the internet connection. Now, the images are sharp, 
the sound is clear, and people stay connected for the entire call. People can communicate with each other as if they were in the same room, even though they are in faraway places. Additionally, video calling isn't just for computers. Many people are using video calling apps with their smartphones, making it even easier to connect anywhere, anytime. With this technology, the world gets smaller and smaller. Don't you think that's a good thing, Ted? I sure do. Thanks, Linda. This has been our technology report. Okay, so um, what do we have right here? Okay, the first one, the woman says that more people, what do you have? You know the answer? Raise your hand, please. Janet? Uh, the woman says that more people are using video calling to communicate online. Correct. Thank you. Number two, more people are able to use video calling because... Uh, Ms. Romero. Um, let us see. The software has been improved. Software has been improved. That's right. Number three. Okay, thank you. Um, older video calling has problems such as... Wants to try? Janet, Janita, do you want to try? Uh, the number three is uh, let us see on clear audio. On clear audio, that's correct. Thank you. Okay, and number four, today's video calling feature wants to try it. Number four. Maritza Isabel. Today's video calling features uh, letter A, clear sound and pitch. Clear sound and pitch. Okay, yeah, that's right. Thank you very much. Second listening. Okay, um, Jenny is, it's a true and false activity. Jenny is disciplined and motivated to work, true or false. Jenny majored in history and politics. Number three, Jenny, Jenny has never written for a newspaper before. Number four, Jenny thinks archaeology is exciting. And number five, her counselor wants her to try news reporting. I'm going to play the track. I want you to listen to it and check if the sentences are true or false. Here we go. Hi, Jenny. Please sit down. What can I do for you today? Well, I'm graduating soon, and I just can't seem to choose a career path to follow. I'm interested in so many things. That's a good thing. It means you have more choices. Now, I know that you're a person who is disciplined and motivated. Am I right? Yes. I like to work, and I'm good at budgeting my time. And let's see, you studied history and politics. Good. What about extracurricular activities? Well, I wrote some articles for the college newspaper, and last summer I volunteered at an archaeological site. That was fascinating. What did you do exactly? I helped tag the items that were found and enter them into a computer database. There was a lot of information to organize. So you are someone who is organized. Great. And you have a lot of patience. Yes, I would say so. An archaeological dig is not very exciting. It's interesting, but there's a lot of waiting and watching. Well, Jenny, have you considered being a reporter? You seem to enjoy writing, and your background matches up very well. I did enjoy writing for the college newspaper, but do you think I have the right qualities? Reporters need to be disciplined and motivated, like you. And your background in history and politics means you're informed about the world around you. Hmm, it seems like a good idea. I think you'd make an excellent reporter, and I have the names of a few local reporters for you to contact. You could talk to a few of them and maybe spend a day with one of them. You know, see what it's like. That sounds great. I'd love to do that. Here you go, and good luck. Keep me posted on your progress, okay? Okay, thanks. I believe there are um, a couple of mistakes in the answers, you know, that you're supposed to enter in the platform for this one. But okay, let's check. Okay, number one is Jenny is disciplined and motivated to work. How about this one? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Uh, who said that? Cesar. Cesar. Okay, Cesar, thank you. 
always let's raise your hand. Yeah, it is true. Okay, that's 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 right. Okay, what about the second one? Jenny majored in history and politics. Is that true or false? About this one, is that true or false? It's false. Okay, false. Okay, uh, thank you, Caesar. All right, uh, that's kind of like the answer that you have to put in the platform. But if I heard correctly, yeah, she studied history and politics. So meaning she majored in history and politics. It will be true, okay. But if you want to get it right in the platform, you have to check false. Okay, thank you. Number three, Jenny has never written for a newspaper before. Is it true or false? What do we have? Raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Let's do this, people. Okay, this is the final, final, you know, uh, part of this course. Noemi Alicia. False. It is false. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the answer you need to uh, use right there. Yeah, thank you, uh, Noemi. Jenny thinks archaeology is exciting. True or false, Maritza? It's true. Okay, true is the answer that you need to uh, take in the platform, but in reality, uh, she said that archaeology is interesting, but not exciting. Okay, so it's two different things. The answer should be false, okay, but you need to take it as true in the platform if you want to get it right. Okay, so here we go. Number five, her counselor wants her to try news reporting. What do you think? Is it true or false? Janet, Janita. There is true. True. Okay, right there. Okay, those are the answers. Thank you very much. Complete the sentences. Complete the sentences with the passive of the verbs in parentheses. Just type the verbs in its correct form. No capital letter or period is needed. In the future, more online courses, blah, blah, blah. You have take by people with busy schedules. How about number one? Uh, in the future, more online courses will be taken by people with busy schedules. Yeah, that's right. Will be taken or are going to be taken. Thank you, Janita. Number two, can't shut down my computer until all my files. What do we have? Who is me? Okay, Caesar. All right, Caesar. I can't shut down my computer until of my file have been downloaded. Have been downloaded. That's correct. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three, in these days, chat rooms, and then you have to use the verb use by universities to host student discussions. What do we have here? Ms. Romero. Um, I think it is are being used are being the university. Used. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Are being used by universities to host students' discussions. That's correct. Thank you, Ms. Romero. Number four, Sam, then you have the verb offer, his dream job at an internet theme company. Okay, so Jenny Elizabeth. It has been offered. Has been offered. Okay, all right. That's correct. Okay, good. Number five. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number five. When I buy a laptop, my old one, blah, 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 and then you have recycle. So what do we have here? What's the answer to this one? Noemi Alicia. Will be recycled. Would be recycled. Okay, yeah, that's right. Will be recycled. Thank you. And the last one, since blogging software became available, millions of blogs, and then you have the verb create. What do we have here? Alejandro Quintanilla. Welcome have home. Been <laughs> Thank you. Have been created. Have been created. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Good. Those are the answers right there. You have to use those to complete the exercise successfully. Uh, next exercise, tag questions and reduce relative clauses. The first one's about tag questions and reduce relative clauses. Read the sentences and add a tag question. And add tag questions. Says, tag questions should be at the end of each sentence. No capital letter is needed. Do not forget to add a question mark. So it will be great if someone figured out how to eliminate spam. Wouldn't it? Okay, I think I'm going to go through the answers right now because we only have about four minutes. So 
it seems like kids spend uh, way too much time playing computer games, doesn't it? Okay. Those infomercials on TV are so annoying, aren't they? Okay. Flyers aren't good for advertisement. Advertising, sorry, are they? And the last one, I hate getting spams. Okay. Now this is uh, a bit weird. I un I I believe that there is a mistake in the sentence because it should be you hate getting spams, not I. But the answer that you have to enter right there is don't you. But to be honest with you, uh, one doesn't match the other. Okay, so that's why I believe they made a mistake when they were uh, typing in the whole sentence. Should be you hate getting spams, don't you? Okay, so if you're getting this one wrong, okay, this is the answer that you have to uh, to put in. Okay, don't you? Remember to use the question marks at the end. For the next exercise, tag questions to reduce relative clauses. Rewrite the sentences using reduce relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. So a person who's willing to work with sick people could be a good nurse. So a person willing to work with sick people could be a good nurse. Someone who is looking for paid vacation shouldn't be a small business owner. So someone looking for paid vacation shouldn't be a small business owner. Number three, anyone who has a good voice is invited to audition for the choir. So anyone with a good voice is invited to audition for the choir. Number five, someone who is interested in art history might love to work in a museum. Should be two words right here. So someone interested in art history might love to work in a museum. Those are the answers right there. In case uh, you still don't have them, okay, you have the answers here. For the next exercise, choose the words, okay? People who work for themselves must be disciplined. Yeah, totally. It takes originality to be a designer. Number three, I admire Tom. He is passionate about what he does. Number four, a technology company must be inno innovative to survive. Number five, decisiveness is a must if you want to be a manager. And number six, teaching requires a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Um, those are the answers right there. Okay, exercise D, just in case you don't have them. Okay, you have them on the screen now. Next exercise, can find it here. It's another multiple choice exercise. Choose the words. Choosing a career path involves exploring all the possibilities. Number two, Jen's job requires her to analyze information and report on it. Number three, everything was a mess until the managers finally solved the problem. Number four, in accounting, it can be expensive to uh, make even the smallest mistake, okay? Number five, sometimes it's easier to find solutions to problems on your own. And number six, a graphic artist generally makes information visually. Okay, organizes information visually also makes sense. Okay, but but the answer that you have to take is makes. Okay, to get it right on the platform. So uh, there you go. You have the answers on the screen now. That's exercise D. Next is just the reading parts, which I believe we don't have time to read. Okay, because it's already it's it's already nine. So we're going to go directly to the answers. Readings. Okay, directly to the answers. Right. I'm pretty sure you have read this on at home. Brett hates talking to people using MP3 players. That will be true. Number two, Brett thinks that people who use this wireless headset looks like, look like they're talking to themselves. Okay, it's true also. Uh, Brett loves wireless headsets. That will be false. And Brett enjoys text messaging his friends. That also will be false. Okay, that's the first reading. Second reading goes here because I didn't have enough space to, you know, put the answers or the questions and answers in here. I had to create two slides. So it's about crafts, okay? So making crafts has become more popular among fashionable young people. Okay, that's the first one. Number two, on crafters.org, people can learn how to make crafts. Number three, Craft blogs are becoming popular for sharing creative ideas with others. Watch out for the typo in here, should be creative with an A. Uh, 
uh, EA, sorry. In number four, me, uh, you have both men and women like making crafts. Okay, so those are the answers there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're finished. Okay, uh, before we go, let me just call attendance one more time. Nadia Isolina Rodriguez Ramirez. Is Nadia Isolina online tonight? Nadia Isolina. Um, how about Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano? Hello, teacher. Hello, welcome. Okay, and with that, we finish. Well, everybody, let me um, thank you. Okay, for this 16 classes, thank you for your patience. I know that it's not easy to be at eight o'clock every night, you know, online for a class. I understand that everybody works and or studies. No, it should be like some some of you work, no, some of you true. probably work and study. So, um, uh, hello, hello. So, um, I, I know that it's difficult to be here, okay? Most people just want to be resting, spending time with their families or some other people. So, um, thank you for, for your patience, for your dedication, for your participation, okay? Uh, it was a pleasure, okay? And uh, who knows, maybe we'll be seeing each other in a different level in the future, okay? You never know. So, everybody, thank you once again, and uh, good night. How nice. Bye, bye teacher. Thank, Thank you for all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Take good care. Good night, my friend.